Assignment one in digital marketing is part of a relatively large, complex project that you will undertake uh, in this course. So it's uh, assignment one and two are linked. Uh, so assignment one is creating a digital marketing plan and then you will execute that plan in assignment two. So whatever it is that you're planning for assignment one, just keep in mind that you will actually execute this plan. Uh, so it comes in the form of a written report to do at one o'clock in week six. Uh, it's worth 30%. Uh, the length of the assignment is 2,500 words, uh, normal sort of plus minus 10% there. If you're outside of that, then uh, penalties will apply. Uh, and same uh, maximum three minute video uh, you need to include in there as well with your industry partner, which I'll talk about more in the future slides. <clears throat> so uh, in broad terms, you are required to write a strategic digital marketing plan. Uh, with a detailed proposal, uh, with a timeline uh, for a digital marketing portfolio that you will then implement uh, in assignment two. Uh, so the purpose of this assignment uh, is to develop a plan based on sound marketing strategy uh, in, with an aim of creating value for your target audience. Uh, a strong plan, of course, is the foundation of any brand, uh, helping to meet audiences' needs and wants measure the impact of the activities that you do uh, and then also of course to continue to improve uh, performance. So let's have a closer look at the assessment criteria. So I've, I've centered the assessment criteria around four sort of central questions. Why, how, uh, or why, who rather, what and how. Uh, so and the reason why I've structured it like that is because for each one of these sections you need to explicitly answer that question. So translating this to what you learned in previous business or marketing courses, uh, these form sort of general parts of, of a you know, business or marketing plan. So the why section uh, is, you know, is, is an assessment of you know, what is the explicit need or motivation? Why do we, what is it that we need to plan for? Why is this plan needed in the first place? So in business language, that's, that's, that's your situation analysis. Uh, but I phrased it as, as that why question, because it's not just, uh, quite often you just, I just get a sort of blend description of a situation, uh, not an analysis, which is much deeper. So you need to, uh, an evaluation of a problem, uh, and then why do we need to address this problem? What is it in the situation, uh, the analysis of the situation? That means that we need to have this plan to address this problem. Uh, and that includes uh, critical analysis of digital trends uh, that the industry uh, that you've chosen to work with is facing uh, and a likely future then of, of uh, digital marketing uh, for your, your brand or business. Uh, second question there is uh, who, uh, who are the stakeholders? Uh, customers and competitors in particular needs to be covered there. So this is your sort of stakeholder uh, analysis. Uh, and that includes a critical analysis uh, of customer value. So you need to have a clear value proposition. What is in it for the customers? So what is it that customers want? How are you going to deliver on those? And then what is it that the competitors are doing, uh, delivering value to customers, perhaps in a better way than, than your business is doing? Uh, and that leads you to the third question here. What is it? Uh, what is it that needs to be achieved on a strategic level? Uh, so, for example, you know, is it about increasing sales? Is it about building an online community? Is it about increasing market shares, building brand awareness, etc.? So, at this level, we're not talking about yeah, we're going to do uh, Instagram or we're going to do TikTok or we're going to do uh, you know build a website. That's tactical. We're talking about it at a strategic level. Uh, and then you know, the what question has to do with what is it that we need to achieve at a strategic level. Uh, and then what does success look like? Uh, what would be a successful implementation here strategically? Does that mean we get more customers? Does that we increase sales, we improve uh, brand awareness, whatever it is. Uh, and at this level as well, you need to set smart objectives. There's more about smart objectives in uh, a different, uh, different video. Uh, uh, and I have handpicked uh, a section from David Chaffee's digital marketing textbook that outlines what, what, uh, what that framework is and how you will use it in, in your assignment. 
so once you've had have your strategic position you can move into uh, the how section how are you then going to execute your plan and uh, and achieve what it is that you want to achieve so this is when you start talking about we're going to build a website we're going to create social media content search engine optimization etc etc uh, and then describe detail in detail how this will be achieved uh, including a description of what platforms you will use uh, what marketing tactics you will employ and in a table format provide an action plan when will you do different things and who will be doing those uh, different things uh, including a budget key performance indicators uh, uh, that you will use uh, next marking criteria is your professional standard uh, so you need to pre present a professionally looking plan uh, so you need to think about uh, how am I going to how you how you will format your document so that it looks professional. It has you know like it looks like a proper business plan with a cover, a table of contents for those working in groups or peers. They have uh, author bios there up front. So there's, uh, there's page numbers, table of contents, uh, executive summary. There's a reference list at the end, uh, and the references are correctly cited. Uh, to you know high quality reliable sources uh, that's what, uh, what professional standard refers to uh, so, uh, and then uh, next marking criteria is uh, industry relationships so you need to independently um, start a relationship with uh, either a small business or uh, an industry mentor more about that in a bit uh, and you need to demonstrate that you ha that you are able and capable of, of uh, creating this this relationship so you need to have a short video with your business partner or industry mentor uh, of max three minutes uh, that confirms the relationships uh, and the details around your collaboration and that they have you know said looked at the plan and that they have completed whatever paperwork that we require uh, them to complete that says that they are you know on board they have done what's what's required on them they are on board with this they know what's uh, they know what they're in for and um, and they are there uh, and providing their their contact details so we know that you you actually have made this this relation with them uh, and then the final assessment criteria that's um, that work 15 percent of the overall mark uh, for this assignment uh, and that's evidence of learning in the course so you need to you know obviously we are interested to see that you're learning something from this course from the theories that we have here on canvas uh, so you need to purposefully and consistently use those theories from the course material that need to be cited in your plan uh, so that we see that you are learning something from this. Uh, Alright, so the assignment is authentic and it's live uh, and you will write a strategic marketing plan uh, uh, proposing two uh, distinct implementations uh, that you will execute this semester. Uh, so sort of reasonably within that time frames and here's just a list of some implementation that you may include it could be social media content creation it could be creating a new website improving an existing website uh, it could be setting up and starting to use uh, a, a range of google products such as the google search console google analytics uh, and so forth not just registering the assets but starting to use those and and, uh, and showing that you're you're using uh, using those google uh, Use Google products to uh, to get meaningful marketing outputs. Uh, it could be search engine optimization or search engine marketing, improving Google rankings. Uh, it could be optimization for mobile. It could be utilizations of uh, the Internet of Things, uh, more data-driven approaches, uses of analytics uh, or integrated marketing communications or combination and uh, seam seamless integration of online and offline strategies. So let's look a bit now about how to format your plan. Uh, as I said, uh, follow standard marketing uh, marketing plan format. So you know what you learned from from previous courses, uh, how to format a, a proper business or marketing plan. Uh, use appropriate headings, uh, and of course, you should not use why, who, what, and how. Uh, those are not professional headings in a business report. These are your assessment criteria that are there to uh, remind you that these sections needs to explicitly respond to those questions. Uh, it is not to be used as headings. So, as I said, for example, the why question is typically called a situation analysis. And, uh, 
I'll let you figure out the rest. Uh, so ensure that it looks professional, of course. Uh, and you, you need to make sure that you, you know, I think I'll cover this, I've said this as well, that you need to explicitly address those marking rubric questions. They, um, uh, that's, that's really important. You look, and look down below here at the assessment criteria and you, you get a clearer view of that as well. Uh, so focus on uh, relevant information and avoid unnecessary details. 2,500 words is quite tight. Uh, so, you know, from start a report, for example, don't waffle on about the history of the business and cover that in length, you know, just get to the point. Why, did, why is this plan needed? Uh, you only need a few sentences to telling what the business is. You don't need you know, half a page on, on, on that. So avoid unnecessary information. Answer the questions that you will be assessed on. Uh, different businesses have unique needs and requirements of course so it is you know you need to tailor it accordingly uh, if you have questions about you know what to include what not to include or how to format your plan then then that's the discussion that you'll have with your tutor uh, we've set aside time in week four for uh, for talking about that in more detail okay so let's look at your options that you have for the assignment so three broad options here for how you can execute your your assignment one well, and and two uh, option one is that you find a small or medium-sized enterprise to work with. Uh, so that could be anywhere in the world. Uh, the only requirement I have is that it is an S SME. So you can't work for Coca-Cola or McDonald's. Uh, if you're unsure if your business fits the criteria, then, then discuss that with your tutor and, uh, and we'll figure out if it's, uh, if it's appropriate or not. Now, the important thing, of course, is that the business needs to agree with whatever it is that you're suggesting. So you're suggesting two distinct marketing implementations, uh, and they need to be on board with that. So if you're saying that you know, you, you're know you going to create content on Instagram, for example, using their Instagram account, then they need to obviously be willing to allow you to do that, to give you login details or whatever it is that, that you need for them. Uh, to be able to execute it so you need to work on on that on, on building that relationship so to speak uh, if that doesn't fancy you uh, you can um, find a uh, industry mentor and then brand yourself as a future graduate uh, and employment seeker so uh, you need to then find someone that is currently working in uh, digital marketing. So the criteria for an industry mentor is that they are working in the industry. So the purpose here is not to find someone that can help you get a good mark on your assignment. If that's your thinking, then you're, you're sort of going in the wrong direction. The purpose of the industry mentor is not mentoring your assignment. It is mentoring you towards the industry, right? So, so you, the, the option two is what we want to see there is you taking steps towards your future, not you working on your assignment, but you thinking strategically, where am I going to be after I'm done with this course and after I'm done at, at RMIT? So taking those steps, setting yourself up to where you want to be, moving towards that that uh, industry and that dream job of your, your future. That is option two. Uh, option three is to find a digital industry mentor uh, as, as well for that option and then start your own small business or brand. So Option three is by far the most time consuming and the hardest one to do. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it in there because I know some of you are entrepreneurial. Some of you may already have a small business, uh, sort of a little side hustle that you've been doing. If you wanna use this assignment to step that up, take that small business of yours to the next level, uh, then that could be a good option. But you know, there is no way around not working with someone external to RMIT. So all these three options, you need to independently find and build a relationship with someone external to RMIT. So obviously your tutor cannot be your mentor. Uh, the whole purpose is for you to make steps out, out of this institution because you know, you're not going to be here forever, I, I hope. Uh, and we are interested in uh, investing in your future uh, with, with, this, uh, with this assignment. So, uh, so yeah, option three, hard to do, but uh, I'm leaving it in there for, uh, for those of you that want, want to explore it. 
uh, and just just you know make sure that for option one and two one and three in particular real goods or services needs to meet real customers at the end of it so if you're building a business you need to be very confident that at the end it's going to be customers buying your products uh, in in some form or sense or if you're not for profit but as you, there's going to be some exchange between you as the business and some customers uh, at uh, at the other end uh, there's no way around that you can't make a fake business for option three uh, okay so work integrated learning uh, you need to ins discuss uh, your implementations uh, with your uh, SME or industry mentor uh, and then uh, so yeah you, it, it's your job to initiate and manage that relationship it's a central part of the assignment so you can't it's not an excuse to say oh but you know my mentor is away or I can't like I can't get hold of my my SME to record this video at the end it's like but but you know when to do that is now so so you need to work on that relationship and make sure that the person you're working with is reliable enough so that they will uh, you know you, you set that date this is when we need to record that video because this is when when I will finish uh, my work so it's it's a matter of showing that you're you know you're a responsible reliable person as well and that you you building that relationship is a central part of the uh, of the assignment so don't leave that to uh, the last minute penalties will apply and uh, it is typically not grounds for um, for special consideration or anything like that if you can't because if you can't make that relationship because it is part of uh, of the assessment criteria so communicate with them early uh, and when you make your video uh, make sure that if you're working as a group or a peer um, all students and the mentor or SME needs to be visible and appear in that video voiceovers is not sufficient we need visual evidence of, uh, of you and your, your mentor or SME uh, you don't have to be physically present together you can do it via Teams or Zoom or any other video conference but there's got to be a you know, video of of you together that's uh, that's what we're looking for there uh, so uh, before you submit assignment one we have set aside time for to, to work with you on that as well so if you look through the modules here you will see that uh, the uh, week four classes uh, uh, is it's called workshopping uh, assignment one uh, so there we we'll set aside time for you to discuss what it is that you're planning to do uh, and you can, you know, get ample chances of asking tutor all sorts of questions you want to see if what you're suggesting is appropriate and uh, uh, to help you, you know, make your relationship with your, um, uh, with your industry partner as well. Now, uh, I have sort of uh, mentioned a couple of times here already that you have options to work individually uh, as uh, in peers or, or, or as a group. Uh, so that's up to you one two or three people working together uh, it's totally um, uh, totally your choice there uh, and uh, so yeah if you if you work together as a, as a group or as a peer make sure that uh, in that table where you out, outline you know the how you're going to implement your plan so the, the tactical implementations that you you put the names and responsibilities so who will actually do what in in this um, uh, in the in the group or in the peer uh, which is you know particularly important uh, for for those that work in group and peer now groups and peers for groups and peers only uh, you must include author bios if you're working alone you don't have to have an author bio uh, but if you work in groups or peers you need to have that up front so it needs to sort of outline who you are uh, and what, how you have contributed to that report. So what did each individual contribute to the report? So uh, you can just, you know, just Google your way to figure out like how, how to write an author bio and what to include and so forth. But it needs to, from, from my point of view here, it needs to clearly say like who, who's been working on this and what, what has each, each individual contributed to in this plan. Uh, if you look at the marking rubric, you will see that there, there are penalties for groups and peers that have not included uh, author bios so make sure that you get that in it's not part of the word, word count 
uh, but it is a requirement for for that. Obviously, you know, the requirement of the whole assignment is the same. So there is an incentive, there is a benefits of uh, of teaming up, working together as peers and groups for this assignment. Uh, but you know, some some people work best alone, so the decision is yours. And um, uh, yeah, that I leave leave that up to you. So just finally, uh, this is also on Canvas, uh, listing out the method for you know completing this assignment. First first thing, uh, think about you know I'm going to work individually as a pair or as a group, uh, and then which option should I choose? You know, do, do I know anyone that runs a small business that could need a little bit of help with their with their digital marketing? You know, like if someone in your contact network is always uh, a good way to go there. Or do you really want to, you know, yeah, you, maybe you, ha you don't have much um, of a digital portfolio online. Uh, you don't, maybe you don't have a LinkedIn account and, you know, you, you want to think about, you know, setting up, uh, really making a, a, a good effort, effort there, uh, setting up a website, for example, and you want to put yourself in a position for a future career, so you choose option two. Uh, or the small business, as I said, so, you know, you're going to work alone. Uh, pair or group or do you want to choose option one two or three um, for some of you you know you may not know anyone that's run a small business but you really want that option and then maybe one of your friends in class do and so you can team up uh, and then determine who you who you want to work with reach out and confirm that relationship with your mentor or SME early uh, and then you need to ask them to complete the will agreement uh, or ask your mentor to register uh, as an as an industry mentor. So there are pages here on Canvas that uh, that that uh, looks at that uh, and make sure that that they are registered with RMIT so that we uh, know that you confirm that relationship. Uh, and then you decide on what strategic implementations uh, you want to do with your together with your SME or, or industry mentor. Uh, you come to class, discuss your. Uh, uh, your plan and your directions of your uh, uh, of your proposal with your uh, with your tutor, uh, and then you do further research on that chosen industry. Write your plan, uh, discuss your plan finally there with your industry mentor or SME in recorded in that short video, confirming that you've completed whatever paperwork that we require, and then you submit uh, your uh, your plan uh, and your video. Uh, uh, as, as a PDF, so you need to save the document as a PDF, it's the only document format that we uh, accept for this uh, assignment. So uh, uh, that's about it, good luck with your assignment and uh, I'll uh, see you later in uh, further assignment descriptions.